Hello and welcome to another episode of Design and Style. Um, I am one of your co-hosts, Dixie, with Dixie Willard Design. And with me, as always, is the lovely effervescent Rachel with Rachel Moriarty Interiors. And today we have, we are so excited, we connected with our next guest, Ian Kwa, at High Point Market. We had been um, acquainted, I would say, online, because you were at all the places all the time. So Mm -hmm. if you were an interior designer, couldn't miss you, right? (laughs) I got it in 2017. What? I got around in 2017. You got it, yes. You crisscrossed like all of the design events in 2017. All the markets. All across the country. You were hanging out with all the cool kids in 2017. I did. I met a lot of cool kids. I I attended 10 interior design events in 2017, four of which required out-of-state travel. Wow. Wow. That's insane. Well, let's introduce our guest before we get into, because I know we could just jump in. Yeah, it might be nice. Otherwise, we'll just start talking, and the next thing we know, it'll be over, and nobody's going to know who you are. <laughs> As I mentioned, Ian Kwa has been crisscrossing the country this year um, with his camera and his microphone, hanging out, interviewing, photographing designers for Tastefully Inspired. And the, the I'm excited because Rachel and I got to be photographed by him, but he also has photographed Kelly Ellis, Christopher Guy, Michael Berman, Barry Livingstone, Robin Barron, and that's just what he does for fun. For work, Ian designs websites for interior designers and other creative entrepreneurs, and whether it's photography or web design, what lights Ian's fire is the problem-solving and storytelling elements of digital design and by the way, he and I were talking puzzles and problem solving and math mm-hmm. earlier, and Rachel's eyes kind of glazed over. I glazed okay. over for that part, but <laughs> based, based currently in New York, mm-hmm. Ian is originally from Seattle, and he loves listening to audiobooks and photographing cats. I do. And designers. Talk about a differentiator. <laughs> well, are you going to do a cat folio next? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just saw the spark. I just saw a light bulb go. You know, off. I literally, you know what? I could. Um, I, you guys can't see, but uh, I'm, I'm facing my two windows here that look out of my backyard um, here on the border of Brooklyn and Queens. And I've got these cats coming on and I've got this 70 to 300 millimeter lens. For those of you who don't know lenses, that's a really long lens. You can get all up in someone's grill. <laughs> 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 and um, I've probably got, shoot, maybe a thousand photos now of, of wow. cats in all, so- oh, all sorts of, of things. Y- in the back that's of. no joke. Wow. So, yeah, maybe in the future. <laughs> swag. Oh, not swag. Uh, cat folio. Cat folio. Yeah. Or that swaggy be, cat or something like that. That, that, um, that, what is it, cats of Instagram hashtag? That is a really popular hashtag. I don't know if you've ever cruised it, but um, if you're a hashtag cruiser like me. (laughs) So Ian, why don't we start? (laughs) Sorry about that. I just cracked myself up. (laughs) Um, Why don't we start with your design story? Tell us about, tell us about your journey. Yeah. Um, I find it to be a relatively interesting story, actually, Um, because my design story, I, I find it to be quite different than most uh, designers. Most design stories that I hear is based on a moment of inspiration, um, such as, you know, when they were seven years old and, um, you know, moving that desk in their, their and then they said, I, I, this feels right, this is what I want to do, blah, blah, blah. Um, uh, as we were speaking about before we jumped on the podcast, my brain is very logical and um and and it makes hypotheses and then it tests them so my design story is a story of a hypothesis and um uh my hypothesis was that interior designers would be the type of clients that i would like the most um to back up one step i the way i got into web design was through a friend who invited me to join his web design company in 2015. And the biggest thing I learned from that was that I have the entrepreneur bug and I wanted to go at it um, as a solo web designer. Um, And so I had this hypothesis 
as, as I was creating these websites for different types of clients, I had this hypothesis that interior designers would really be the right fit for me. So, um, uh, and not only interior designers, but also creative entrepreneurs, but I wanted to start very specific, okay, in terms of the niche. So in 2017, I tested this hypothesis. Um, and the way I did so is um, that I went to a lot of design events. As I mentioned, I went to 10, I've gone to 10, 10 design events so far in 2017. Um, and I, my first one was High Point Market to in, in spring, and I just showed up. They say just show up, right? So I just showed up. I had two phone numbers in my pocket. One of them was Nick May, host of the Chase Lounge podcast. Met him, got to talking, got to walking, got to dining, and um, really, um, guess, guess what? My very first night at High Point Spring Market, there is a photo of me in um, Printworks at the Proximity Hotel, which is where all the cool kids go at High Point Market. And I'm there photographed with Kelly Ellis, Julia Malloy, Joseph Hecker, Gary Inman, um, Jill... Um, uh, oh, Irwin? Kill me. Thank you, Jill Irwin. Sorry, Jill. You know I love you. <laughs> Um, but so that, and, 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 and it just went in, just dove right in and met, I've met so many people in 2017. Um, and through that, um, found clients for my website business. Um, as you mentioned, my bread and butter is creating websites for interior designers and other creative entrepreneurs. Um, and as I went to these events, I didn't really have that much to do except wandering around and meeting people. So I was like, you know what, like, um, I want something more to do here, you know? And Mark McDonough of Tastely Inspired, um, I was friends with him by that point. Um, and we talk a lot on the phone, just bouncing ideas and having a good time. And he said, well, you wanna jump on, start doing some Facebook Live? Start, you know, doing some, you know, um, media correspondence from some of these things. So I did. And um, for, those of, for those out there who have met me, mainly through markets and design events, they know me as the guy with the camera in my hand. They know me as the guy, um, my, my most uh, well-known piece of content is the Vegas Market Miked Up video, which I created at, at Vegas Market this past summer with um, well-known designer Robin Barron. And um, if, for those of you who haven't seen it yet, I recommend it, just Google um, tastefully inspired Vegas market mic'd up. It'll come out uh, uh, pretty much first in, in, the, in the results. And, um, and so then this past uh, market at High Point where I met you guys, um, I, I had my camera and I was um, shooting portraits of designers, you know, for this series that eventually became Swagfolio. So for those who have met me in person, they know me as a guy with a camera, um, they know me as a guy with a microphone in my hand, um, but the story behind that is that it was an experiment, a hypothesis to use that as a way to engage in these events, to meet people, to contribute to the community, to give back to the community, um, and, and just have something really fun to do. So now it's the end of 2017. Um, and I have had the good fortune of um, redesigning the websites for some pretty visible designers, actually, um, including Barry Livingstone, Phyllis Harbinger, Jared Yoshida. Um, and just to give you I mean, an idea of their visibility, they've all been on the Chase Lounge podcast with Nick May. Um, and, you know, they're, they're published in, you know, Lux Magazine and, and um, uh, in, uh, in all, all, all the ones, you know. So... Um, but my, my mind actually is very logical, but it's actually very poor at reaching for specific pieces of information, like a name sometimes. That's a, just a, to, you to, and to, me both, Ian, you and really? me both. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, back to the story though, right? So now it's the end of 2017 and, um, <clears throat> the question is, where do I go from here? Right? People want to know, Ian. What are you, what do you do, you know, and, um, and what should we know, right? So what people should know is that um, I help interior designers and other creative entrepreneurs with most things digital. Um, and um, my 
the main pillar of the service that I've been offering these days is a website redesign. Um, and now I'm branching out um, with my camera to help designers also with actually the content on their websites. Um, in, in other words, um, photographing interiors that they've shot, um, but um, also kind of lifestyle shots um, that they can use to help tell their brand story. Because as we all know, you know, when you go to someone's website, yeah, you can see all the pretty interiors and stuff, but you want to understand who they are. And that type of media is very important. So, you know, doing those photos and then also video as well, I, I help my clients with. Um, so I'm really on, on track to be a kind of a one-stop shop for interior designers and other creative entrepreneurs, um, with this type of stuff. And, um, see if there's anything else I want to mention. I think, I think that's it in a nutshell. Yeah. So I'm wondering where did the photography part come in was that like because you obviously had the equipment I mean if Mark said from Tastefully Inspire said hey go out and do this stuff you obviously already had oh, yeah. equipment, correct so yeah, I, I'm just curious is that was that always just a hobby or were or no that's a good question actually um, uh, before websites photography was the thing that I was um, making a go at it with okay I, I was making go at it as a professional photographer okay yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. perfect. The only reason I ask is because, you know, I, I just told you my background is photo styling. So, mm -hmm. um, and it's, that's like the near and dear. That was my first love, fashion and, and photo styling. It's where I met my husband on the set of a fashion shoot. He was a photo assistant uh -huh. and uh, I was a stylist. We were in our 20s and we were really cute, let me tell you. Um, but no, that's why that stuck out to me. I, I couldn't figure out how those two were you know why you had that all that technical knowledge and um mm -hmm. equipment because you know that's no joke right to no, that's a, that, that. that was the right question to ask that's an important piece of the story i'm glad you drew that out yeah, <laughs> yeah. so um we're gonna go more into the photography end but you know all of our audience all of the people in our group are basically the people that you're talking to, creative entrepreneurs and interior designers. Yeah. Um, you had some tips that you wanted to share. I, and I, re I actually want to hear these tips about um, the portfolio and how mm -hmm. to, um, the formula for writing copy for your portfolio. Yeah. Because I think it's important. I talk about moods. I like to talk about moods you know, more than anything, not about style. So I'm I saw that on your website, Rachel, and I got to sorry to interrupt you. I just got to tell you, that's the first time I've ever seen copy written that way for a portfolio, and it worked. I really liked it. So I want to hear this formula because I'm always, it's been a long time since I've talked about it or, or done my copy. I will always, because that's just me. I, you know, I'm very hippy dippy feeling kind of a person. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm interested. Tell us your, tell us your tips. Sure. Um, and to do this and to make it easier, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I know sure. that there's um, people out there that are only listening, so I will um, narrate as I go through as well. That's great. And then if, um, if somebody is watching on YouTube or, or listening on iTunes or SoundCloud, you can always go to the Design and Style podcast website, and we have the YouTube channel on there as well, or uh, video on there as well. Right. So is this your client, Heather yeah, Bentley Design? Exactly. So, um, so yeah, this is a website that I recently designed for an interior designer named Heather Bentley. She's in Dallas, Texas. Um, and Heather um, has a, a really strong e-design background. Um, and uh, she's now transitioning to um, doing more in-person projects. As a result, she didn't have many images yeah. to use for yeah. her portfolio. She said, I said, okay, I said, Heather, how many projects do you have that you are confident to put out there on your portfolio? She said, I've got three. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what? Three is, in my opinion, the, the baseline. I, I would say three is a great baseline, and it is enough. I yeah. mean, for, 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 for designers out there who only have a few projects. I say three is a great number to start with. Now, I agree. the challenge 
with Heather's portfolio was to convey her expertise enough with only three projects because it's like, you know, it's like, well, I only have three. Maybe I'm just going to feel like I haven't done much work. I said, well, let's figure out how to um, not only stretch out this portfolio, but how to use copywriting to enhance it and make it more impactful. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down this page here. Um, uh, I'm going to give it a once over first. Okay. And then I'm going to go through it and narrate. All right. So we scroll down here. We see title, subtitle. We see um, photos laid out in a masonry style layout. Um, we've got a short paragraph at the end and then we go on to the next project. Um, and it was through working with Heather on this project that a formula revealed itself to me of how to write copy for a portfolio. And, and, and here it is. So it starts with the title. I'm going to read it. It says Hollywood Heights Bungalow, Dallas, Texas. So we, we give it, we give the project a, a, a title that's kind of descriptive, right? Um, and this is common practice with interior designers. Um, uh, right? And then you give the location, give it some more oomph. Um, and, then he, and then the subtitle, a total home renovation for a busy young couple who travels constantly. And here with the subtitle, we are describing what type of project it was and also the type of client that we worked with. And I find this to be very important to communicate to the visitor. This is an opportunity to, for that visitor to identify with a client that- Self-identify, right? Self-identify. Yeah. Agreed. A busy young couple who travels constantly. If they're a busy young couple, you know, they, they say, that's me. She can work with someone like me. Mm -hmm. right? Then we go on, we've got the photos, and at the end, we've got the paragraph, and I'm going to read it here. The challenge of this space was to incorporate modern furniture used in the client's previous high-rise residence in a way that made sense for a 1940s bungalow. Together, we achieved this by keeping clean classic lines and embracing the black sofa by repeating the shade throughout the space. Now, Rachel and Dixie, let me ask you, um, can you put your finger on what is it that we're trying to convey in the first sentence and what is it that we're trying to convey in the second sentence? I was going to say the first one is describing what the challenge was. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's inherent in the fact that it starts with the challenge, but yeah. you know, presenting, presenting the challenge, which so many of us have, we move, we have other stuff from other places that we need to reuse. Yeah. And then the second is just how it was solved. Yes, precisely. Um, and, and so that, so that's it. That's the formula. It's for that paragraph, it's present the challenge or, and then you can use that word. The challenge was, but another way to say it is the client wanted. In both cases, we're, we're communicating um, the parameters in which the designer created their design, right? And, and, and in the second sentence, it says how it was done. And I find this to be an extremely important um, or a useful way to bring the photos to life and to convey to the visitor, the website visitor, the prospective client, that this is not just a designer who can make things pretty, but this is a designer who can solve a problem for me. I'll tell you what is sticking out to me, and for those, um, you know, if you're listening to, to it on iTunes, I'm looking at the website right now. The word that is like sticking out to me, because A, it's my, my love language, um, there is like, no B. Is? There is, what is it? Is it together? Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. I mean, it's just like, it's jumping out at me. And I love that because e even me as I, I have a super collaborative process myself. So I am just like, if I were looking to hire a designer, that would be the word for me. That's it. That's it. And that's exactly what um, Heather said to me. She said, I want to emphasize that this is collaborative. And I actually wrote this copy on this website. I um, love how succinct you did it too, because I cannot get my copy that succinct. <laughs> I mean, it's wonderful. And, and that's, a, that's actually a lot of 
the work that I do with my clients, this is something to understand about my process when I'm working with clients. Um, I'm on the phone with them and they can see my computer screen. Um, and, it, and not for the whole project, but for, for certain key points of the project. And, um, and Heather, actually, actually, she doesn't consider herself a writer. So she told me kind of what she wanted to convey. And I uh, worked through the copy here. And together, she wanted to convey that it is collaborative. And, and these words are so important, you know, in, in, in communicating that, you know. So, um, but just to summarize um, the formula, um, the actionable tip here, the formula goes like this. Um, when you're writing copy for, your, for a particular project um, in, in your portfolio, you can do title, okay, Hollywood Heights, Bungalow, Dallas, Texas, subtitle, a total home renovation for a busy couple who travels constantly, and then for the paragraph, first sentence is challenge or what the client wanted, second sentence is how you solve that design puzzle or that challenge or that desire from the client it's so easy but but not <laughs> but not it's the, same it's the formula really, is so perfect it's simplicity because it's like title and i love that you have the city probably for seo purposes i would assume mm -hmm. um the the name of the project and the city the challenge so it's basically title subtitle challenge solution, solution. there you go title subtitle challenge solution it's a mathematical formula, and it makes me oh, so geez. happy. It's an oh, geez. And, and I was so happy when, we, when, when, when it revealed itself to me in this project because I've literally never seen this formula done this way, um, you know, on Interior Designer's website. And I was like, yes, this is it, you know. And, and, and so that's why I wanted to share it here on your podcast with your clients because I'm not sure that if they've ever seen this before, you know. Quite like well, you and Dixie, you guys, I always tell, I'm always amazed at Dixie's um, ability to um, find patterns and things. So mm -hmm. I am not surprised that you saw this pattern emerge because you, you both of your brains, you guys need to be government analysts, basically, mm -hmm. is what you need to be. <laughs> so that is, thank you so much for sharing that. I mean, even, I think, you know, especially someone just starting out. Um, and not, I don't even think someone not, even me, I'm going to have to work that in somehow, even with my different format and a little bit of my fluff and mood and feelings. Well, um, I noticed, Rachel, that you actually do incorporate the, um, the, uh, uh, the, the challenge solution. Yeah. Yeah. I yours, do. Yours, it's yours a little different. like, I, I view my portfolio pieces as little mini design briefs, which mm -hmm. is kind of what you're doing too. Mm -hmm. Yours are just more succinct than mine. Um, it is a mathematical formula, you know, that, that can, be, can be followed. And I, and I think that um, it can be empowering for the designers out there who, who right now, their, 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 web, their, their, their portfolio is simply a collection of images, you know. And, um, and I think that this is such an easy way to, like I said, not only um beef it up a bit you know for someone who doesn't have much portfolio but more importantly to communicate um someone's to, to communicate the essence of their design this is very this is very revealing in terms of mm -hmm. how they're you know this so yeah i think this is amazing uh so clean uh, i know and fresh and crisp and it's just if you're just listening, you have got to go and watch the video and check out how it looks. Or Heather, go to her yeah. website. I'll put that in the show notes. HeatherBentleyDesign.com. Beautiful. Like, like you said, that is enough. Three projects is enough. Mm -hmm. Three well-photographed projects with a lot of white and the perfect copy. And uh, yeah. that's amazing. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Great work. And I love that touch of red in there. Dixie loves a, a mm -hmm. colored uh, I could live there. Hair. Oh, totally. <laughs> Totally. One of the things, you know, I'm a video girl. I'm a live streamer. Um, and one of the things I want to talk to you about is your, the next thing you sort of brought up, which is an easy way to create polished videos for your website. This mm -hmm. is something I have put off because there's one thing about going onto your social media and riffing, which is what I do, versus uh, creating something polished enough for your website. Mm. 
So I am like chomping at the bit to hear this one. Please right. tell us, please. Please, Ian. All right, so check it out, you guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and when I say you guys, I mean, I mean you guys and, all the, and all the guys and, and ladies out there listening. Um, I'm really excited about this topic because um, just as you said, Rachel, it is one thing to put up a cell phone shot, you know, in your kitchen sort of thing, um, video, but to, you know, our webs, someone on Luann Nagara's uh, podcast, The Well-Designed Business, said it really well one time. They said, your social media should be used as that freestyle fee where you can just go crazy. But when it comes to your website, it should feel like a polished presentation. You should respect people's time. And, and when they come to your website, you should be efficient. You should be, you know, boom, 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 and make it all nice and beautiful, right? So um, that is obviously the challenge for uh, interior designers and other creative entrepreneurs who, we all know that with video needs to be on their website. That's not the, that's not the question. The question is how. And the question is how to create video that, that, that fits well on a website. So here it is. Um, and so can you guys see my screen now again? Yes. All right. So here we are. We're looking at Heather Bates' homepage. Um, and like I said, this is a site that I recently uh, designed for her. Um, and I'm going to go over to her portfolio page. And, um, and right off the bat, you see um, a, some similar, similarity here with Heather Bentley's um, uh, portfolio page in the sense we have the, the title, subtitle, right? So the first one is, the first title is South Riding Residence. Subtitle, Designing for a Couple from India Who Wanted Paris. Oh, that's great. And Heather um, came up with that line. I thought that was brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, and again, we've got, you know, photos of the project um, laid out in a masonry style. And for those out there who don't know masonry, masonry, uh, layout is when photos are fit together like a jigsaw puzzle to create one large rectangular, you know, uh, square of photos, the way that you would see in a magazine or something. And it gives a very finished, polished feel. Like, like everything is supposed to be where it is, you know? Um, and as we can see here, the difference between Heather Bentley and Heather Bates is instead of having now this um, paragraph um, design story. We've actually got a little video here. Okay, you see that little video there, oh. and and I'm gonna play it. On this project, the couple has preteen kids and a huge, long-haired German Shepherd. The number one reason there is no rug in the living room, at least for the next year. In the family room, the wife doesn't really care for the traditional fireplace and had a modern sectional. We removed everything but the mantle. The tile surround was picked to match the art. In the end, the clients are very pleased with their house, and they love the new look of their home. That is just the pictures and her talking. That's it. I am. That is literally just the pictures and her away. talking over it. But it's it's putting it look all at, together. Oh. <sighs> I love that. Oh my, I can totally do that. I think I could, I think that's what I've been trying to convey too is so, so much of that feel, since I speak in feelings and moods mm -hmm. about my projects, like, uh, I think that's going to be such a better pro presentation. Mm. I love that. It, so for those who are listening and weren't watching what we, what we just watched just now is a series of, slides, um, fo photos of her project. And as each slide came up, um, uh, the, the photo would either recede or come forward in, in the frame um, with a kind of like a slightly animated effect. It's called, technically it's, it's called a Fred, uh, um, not Fred Burns, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ken Burns. Ken Burns. Oh, the Ken Burns, yes. The Ken Burns effect, um, Fred Burns. Hey, shout <laughs> Fred Burns Shout out to Fred Burns, copy. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a Ken Burns effect, and it and it and it slightly animates each photo, so it's not just it doesn't feel so static. And so, what we watch just now, it's a series of photos, each one with a Ken Burns effect. Um, we've got background music to give a little mood, and then we've got Heather Bates 
um, narrating and talking about her project. She's talking about what the clients wanted. She's talking about um, the design decisions that she made during the project. And by watching this one minute video, um, you literally get the story of the, the design story of the space to, to read all of that would be, I don't even know how many paragraphs, maybe like three or four paragraphs. It, most people are just not going to read it. And, and, and therefore they're not going to get that much. Ah, I know? love that. I think Ian, because, you know, Dixie and I focus on visibility in our group. I don't think you're, I don't know if you're a member of our group, but we focus on visibility and a lot of our designers um, don't, they want to do video. They know they have to do video, but they have an issue putting them being the face mm -hmm. of the video. So I feel like this is the perfect marriage. Any designer can talk about their project, right? That right. is so what I had had her do is I had her send me a voice memo. I had her, you know, write some copy, send me a voice memo. Um, and then I put it together in iMovie um, with the images from her portfolio and, and the background music. Um, what, I like, what I like about this, what, what, what makes this such a powerful tool is that it can be done um, without all of the, the fear and the headache of, you know, being on screen, getting the makeup and the hair. It's such a production to put yourself on video, you know, especially if you have high standards for how you look on video, that it can be so daunting, it can be prohibitive. And not only that, but it actually dates the video. Because what if in the future that designer doesn't like the way they look anymore like that? Or, you know, something about the way they look is not apparent. Whereas with this, the, the video remains timeless. Right now, I want to I want to add one more bit here, which is that I do believe that it is important, or rather, I do believe that it's hugely helpful for an in, for an interior designer or other creative professional to have their to have at least one video on their website that does show their face, so that um, when the the website visitor that prospective client views that video um, of of them seeing their face, hearing their voice. And that could be done really well on the about page, right? Then they go over the portfolio page and they put two and two together and they say, okay, yes, that is that designer's voice that I'm hearing as I'm watching these videos. Oh. That piece is important to, to, to put two and two together. You know, I mean, now, you know, if they end up talking with that designer on the phone and they hear the voice, yeah, I can they put two and two together that way as well. But the website should be a self-selling machine, you know, or, or rather a, 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 a self, uh, so, uh, self um, uh, uh, sustaining or, or you know you know it, it should sell for you right Some, someone should come to your website come to each of your pages and, and, and it, everything should make sense mm -hmm. I'm, I'm ready I'm mm -hmm. ready to call this person you know so um, so that so that's it you know so 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 with those simple ingredients a, a video can be made in a very lightweight way like this and the last piece I'll say is about why use the photos over a video? It is so much cheaper to have a um, uh, your interior design photographed, and then and you've and, and, and you've already got the photos or a lot of projects, mm -hmm. as opposed to having video production done mm -hmm. of a space that is such a a, a, a a heavier task. Primarily because it's so much more work to light an interior okay. for video. Oh yeah. It's, for, 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 for photo, you can use flash. For video, you have to bring big lights to do it right. You know, so uh, un unless, unless that space is blessed with beautiful natural light. Right, right. You know? so, oh my gosh, I am blown away. Thank you, Ian, so much. I think you probably cracked open a whole lot for, uh, I, my mind is like going right now. I know. Literally I know. like on its, it's just spinning and-, and Can we though? Can, well, first of all, I want to say you were on a well-designed business yeah. and had even more tips. So we're going to shoot people over there for more, but I don't want to let you go without talking about Swagfolio. Okay, cool. Absolutely. And, um, and, and so yeah, before our podcast today, we mentioned three tips I, wa I wanted to share. And the third one, we won't go through it, but I'll tell people um, uh, the, the thing that I was going to share is 12 criteria by which to evaluate your website to see how well you're doing. 
And um, you can see these 12 criteria by going to my website, housedigitaldesign.com. Perfect. And on the home page, there's a button there um, to, to click and, and, to, and to see the 12 criteria. Now, um, I actually also went through these 12, 12 criteria with um, Luann Nagara on a well-designed business podcast in detail. Um, and, and so I won't go th uh, through them all here. Um, but could I just say maybe like the first three to give people a taste? Of course, of course. Okay. Um, let me just pull it up here. All right. So 12 criteria by which to value your, value your, your website. Number one, does it feel clean and easy to use? You know, like the layout, the imagery, the navigation. Does it feel complete? In other words, does it hit all the key points that, uh, of everything that should be on a website? Um, does it feel thoughtfully written and succinct? Um, and in general, um, no more than one screen full of text should be shown before another video or, or, or photo, a photo comes. Like when you're on a mobile phone and you're scrolling through, Mm -hmm. You know, and you see one full screen of text. I, I generally use that as a rule of thumb. Oh, that's good. You know, um, and you know what? Let me just say the rest of the 12 here. Oh, without <laughs> does, does it feel fresh? Are the portfolio, blog, and testimonials up to date? Does it feel guided? Are there signposts and tactile buttons to guide people through the site? Does it feel beautiful? Are the photos, um, uh, font, and colors um, well, well laid out and situated and, you know, and well chosen. Does it feel personal enough? Does it reveal enough personality about you, you know, through, you know, your copy? Does it feel cohesive? Does the voice feel cohesive throughout the site, you know, or does it, or is it jumping back and forth between first person and third person? Does it feel endorsed, you know, through social media testimonials and other social proof? Does it feel credible and authoritative? Um, through publications, awards, uh, an approach page, a blog page? Does it feel actionable? Um, is it obvious what to do after visiting your site? And finally, number 12, does it feel polished? Are there, are there, are there obvious flaws such as typos, missing links, et cetera? And if you go down this list, you can literally evaluate your website and, um, and you can actually grade it. If you missed one of the 12, um, sorry, if you hit all 12 of them, it's an A+. Plus. If you miss one of the 12, it's an A. If you miss two of the 12, it's an A-, minus. three, it's a B+, plus, and so on, down the line, all the way to E. You can evaluate your website that way. So, um, sorry, sorry, sorry to, 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 to go through that. I, 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 I just wanted to go through it really quick. I, I feel like it's, it's such a simple way. So, but yeah, to, for more, go to the one. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Dixie's smiling ear to ear. She just loves... I know. Technical You're speaking her and love and language. Puzzles and logic yes. and yeah. Speaking Dixie's love language. The, the exactly. language of logic, the logic and systems. You can tell why we fit so well together. We're like definitely the yin and yang of, uh, of interior design here. <laughs> um, but we did want to talk about Swagfolio. Um, it's it's your latest iteration of Ian. Your yeah. it's a little bit of a pivot to what you've done. Yeah. Um, you you I love the picture right after High Point, didn't you? It's a brand I new. I did. I, I started. I started posting after I came back from High Point Fall Market this year. You were inspired because you did some. You created really created art there. Mm -hmm. Um, you definitely did. I remember the first one you showed me when we. We met up at a, you know, one of the many parties. It was the one of um, David Santiago, mm -hmm. and he was he. I, how did you do that, by the way? Was he float? Like he looks like he's yeah. floating. Was he jumping? He literally leapt into the <laughs> air, um, so, and I caught him at the peak of his jump, suspended over um, over Regina K, designed oh Regina K from New York, who was laying on the couch on her back <laughs> with a smirk on her face. And the photo shows David Santiago suspended horizontal about, I would say about three to four feet in the yes. air above her. Yes. And you look at this photo and it's like, how, how? did this happen? <laughs> because it's literally, it's, it's, it's obvious that he's going to land on her. Right, right. And well, yeah, all I can think about is what happens next. <laughs> exactly. Um, and, and, and he's very athletic and he jumped up there and we, and we, and we, and we, and we, and we, we were shooting and the way I like to shoot for these types of things often is all, I like to play music. 
and it's this drum music it's like percussion music usually that i could play and, and we get all into it and and i always tell people um a photo is created by um the photographer and the subject together you know often kind of bouncing ideas off each other and that's what we did and, and david said what if i jump you know um and so we did it and we caught it and for, and for those of you out there go to swag folio instagram swag folio and check it out it's one of my favorite photos i've ever taken oh my gosh it was so good it was so good and then i feel like that was less just set the bar you know you mm -hmm. were like i am going to create art and that's what you did during that show. And we were so honored to be part of that. Mm -hmm. um, you also were there. You helped us with technical on our um, event at the Chandra event. Right. You streamed it live. Um, we all joined forces, Tastefully Inspired and Design Wall and Kelly Ellis. And we all shared it out. Um, that was fun. That was a, a first. Absolutely. Yeah. That's so. So thank you. Um, and to anyone listening, definitely go see Swagfolio. These are not just photos. They are, um, what are you calling it? I mean, it's portraiture, well, they are, but it, they're, they're it's portrait. art. Every yeah. Single, every single photo is a portrait. Um, and um, I, uh, I define swag as that it factor that feels kind mm -hmm. of, that, it's, it's a little extra. That feels a little bit extra kind of cool or creative. You know, and so the photos that I post, um, they they have to be a portrait, and they have to be not just a. Can, they can't be quite normal. They got to be a little bit special, you know. And so, um, and and that's what it is. And and most of the um, portraits are um, those who are in the design community. Mm -hmm. um, and I have other um, artists and creatives mixed in there as well. So, Word. And you totally inspired me yes. that there was a picture that Ian took at Chandra where we're all standing there. Um, some of us are up on the bar. Some of us are standing. Some of us are sitting on stools. It's, and I got to looking at all of the other ladies that were in the picture and I thought I'm missing something. Mm. And so I took that picture to my hairdresser and I was like, I want to fit in with this group just a little bit more. And so we are making some changes. <laughs> so like you inspired. That. You're you're inspiring her you new. Um, well, she's been, like I said earlier offline. She's becoming more herself. She's becoming more badass. And I think um, that photo, seeing herself amongst other, I mean, it was funny that we all had pixies. Mm -hmm. Didn't see mine. I had a, my my usual scarf on, but yeah. um, but you know, I love it that. Um, that it inspired you in that way. And I think all of, I think it's going to inspire others as well. And in and, and unexpected ways, you never know. I mean, who knew before you got on this call that Tixie would say, you, you've inspired my new, my new look. I love it. So I think that's the perfect place to end it. I think so. Thank you Ian for sharing your time and your wisdom with us. Um, I'm so excited. Where do you want people to connect with you at, um, Oh, we've got all the places. We have all the places. Where where do you hang out mostly? Instagram. Um, I ha I hang out on Instagram um, and uh, Facebook as well. Um, mostly Instagram though. And um, for those who want to find out more about the uh, website stuff, head over to housedigitaldesign.com. <coughs> and um, uh, there's there, I've got videos of myself up there and and resources for people. Um, and also I offer a. Um, complimentary 30 minute strategy session for the website that we can actually go wow. through the criteria um, and, uh, and and talk about ways to spruce up their website or all sorts of possibilities. So that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And just in case anybody doesn't have a pen to write things down, just remember, go over to design and style podcast.com and in the show notes for this episode, we'll have the links to house digital, some of the websites that Ian showed us. And of course, all of the social media. Thanks, Ian. Thank you so much for having me, guys. Bye. It was so much fun. I know. Bye. <laughs> this podcast was made possible in part through the support of our preferred partners, like the Design Network. The Design Network offers one of the most powerful to-the-trade e-commerce programs in the furniture industry, combining the top brands in furniture, the best prices, and unparalleled logistics all in one place. 
Go to www.thedesignnetwork.com to join the Design Network's Trade Direct program, create your designer profile, connect with new clients, and start shopping today.